Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a nice differential equation. We have y prime multiplied by y double prime and that equals y triple prime. So the first, second and third derivative. So can we find, in other words, a function such that when we differentiate that function once and twice and multiply those together, can we get the third derivative of a function? Is that possible? What do you think? Okay, note down your thoughts, ideas, and then we're going to get to the solution. All right, first of all, one of the things that I want you to notice is that we don't have the y in this equation. We only have the derivatives, which is good and sometimes can be bad. But one thing that makes this problem easier is you can use substitution. Since we don't have y, let's go ahead and call this something. How about u? Right? You can hopefully solve this problem, right? The variable u. And of course, you can solve it, right? So if you set y prime equal to u, that implies this. y double prime is, by definition, the derivative of the derivative, right? So we're going to get u times u prime. And the third derivative is the derivative of the derivative of the derivative or the derivative of the second derivative. Make sense? You just keep driving. And that'll be u double prime. So at least we were able to reduce the degree, which is good, obviously. You don't want to deal with a third degree. This is much better, right? First step. Okay. Now, this next step is going to be looking at this from a differential perspective, like u and u prime, when they get together in a product form, that is a good thing because you can kind of hopefully unchain this. You know what I'm talking about? I'm talking about the chain rule. But you must use the chain rule in the opposite direction, kind of like reverse engineer the chain rule. That's why I call it unchain. And if you think about it, if you, for example, had like x squared and differentiated it, you would get 2x. How can you get x? Uh, well, if you differentiated half of x squared, that would be x. Good. What does that have to do with this? Well, I got u prime. So how can I get u prime by differentiation, right? Or how can I get u? Okay. Did I get you? So to get u, I would need u squared. So what happens if I, let's just experiment. What happens if I differentiate u squared? I have to use the chain rule. This is where the unchaining comes in, but first I need to see the process, right? If you differentiate u squared, you're going to bring the 2 to the front, reduce the power, and then by chain rule, you must multiply by the derivative of the inside. In this case, the inside is u, and that will be u prime. Good, we're so close. We did not get u times u prime, but we did get 2 times that. And that can easily be adjusted by multiplying both sides by 1 half. And derivatives allow multiplication because anytime you have a coefficient, like let's say you are differentiating a constant times a function, it is the derivative of the function times the same constant. So you can take the constant out because the derivative is a limit and with limits, you know, you can do that, right? Cool, cool. Now, that property is very helpful because now we got the derivative of the u squared times one half on one side that came from here. And what about the u double prime? Oh, that's easy. u double prime is the derivative of what? u prime. Beautiful. Now, we were able to get differentials on both sides or derivatives on both sides. So we can kind of undifferentiate or integrate. <laughs> so in other words, we are going to find antiderivatives for both sides. But don't forget, they're equal up to a constant, right? Don't forget that because a lot of times uh, professors will take away, if not the whole thing, they'll take away a lot of points. For some reason, there's a big. That's a big deal. So when you integrate the derivative of u squared, you're going to get u squared, right? But of course, it's going to be half of that, so it's going to look like this, right? But since this has a derivative inside, let's go ahead and consider this first. What is the integral of u prime prime? It's u prime. Great. And then this one is just going to be one half u squared. Beautiful. Now we got to uh, the first degree, which is very nice because this is even easier. How do you solve it? Well, oh, I almost forgot. Sorry, professor. I almost lost points there, but I remembered, right? So let's just call this C1 because we're going to use quite a few constants. And at the end, we might just replace with C, whatever. Or you can use a K, whatever. It doesn't matter. But using subscripts is a great idea because 
There's only 26 letters in the English alphabet. I don't know, Turkish alphabet, I think, has 29 letters. Uh, most alphabets is going to have around that, but you don't want to use all the letters that... Anyways, you can't even... I can't even write some of the Greek letters, like Psi, or... No, it wasn't Psi, but there was one letter that was really hard for me that kind of looked like this. But anyways, really hard. So let's go ahead and see how we can solve such a problem. First of all, what is the uh, U prime? U prime is the U over dx. Good. Let's go to make a common denominator on the right hand side. We're going to get this divided by that. You see, this is where uh, replacing some constants with other constants. Like, for example, I can go ahead and replace this with C sub 2. And then this is going to look like the U over dx equals U squared plus C sub 2 divided by 2. Again, C sub 2 is a constant. Let's go ahead and separate this. This is a separable differential equation. We can write it as du over u squared plus a constant equals dx divided by 2 or 1 half times dx. Now we can go ahead and integrate both sides since we separated the variables. Now integration on the right hand side is super easy because it's just going to be half of x plus another constant less you see sub 3. But on the left hand side... Mm, things aren't that nice. You know why? Because depending on the sign of C sub 2, if C 2, can I call it C 2 instead of C sub 2 because that's kind of weird? If C 2 is positive, right, then uh, we're going to have u squared plus a positive constant, which is uh, 10 inverse, arc tangent, right? So we can kind of replace C 2 with something like maybe a squared. So now our integral is going to look like this, du over u squared plus a squared. Again, a squared is a constant. As you should know, this is equal to 1 over a times arc tangent u over a. I'm not going to add the constant at the end because we have it on the right-hand side already. You don't need two constants. But we do have, I hope I did not ignore Okay, I kept the 2 on the right-hand side, like 1 half, so it's good. I don't, ha I don't need a 2 here. Cool. Now, we have 1 over a times arctangent u over a, and that equals 1 half of x plus, what was my constant? C sub 3. Okay, great. We could also use b. It doesn't matter. No big deal. Now, what am I going to do with this? Probably back substitute what is u, right? We kind of need to know what that, that is. Of course, this is only, this is one of the cases, right? If C2 is positive, we can use our tangent. If C2 isn't positive, then it's a different story, obviously. But I'll try to keep it short. So from here, we get 1 over A times arc tan U. By the way, what is U? U is, I think, Y prime, right? And this is what we get. Obviously, you can do something like this. You can multiply both sides by a first. That's going to give you arc tangent y prime over a equals a over 2x plus a c3. And then we can kind of tan both sides. Uh, you can also call this b and you can call this c, whatever. I don't know. At the end, we're going to, you know, probably use something else. And so you're going to have something like arc tangent y prime over a equals cx plus b. And then if you tan both sides, y prime over a is going to be tangent of cx plus b. And then y prime is going to be a times tangent of cx plus b. But it's important to be able to get the u by itself because u is the derivative of y. So we still need to solve this. This just brings up another differential equation, which we can solve. How do you solve uh, the tangent. If you think about integrating tangent, the uh, integral of tangent x dx is actually uh, that comes from sine over cosine. And if you su use substitution, call this like maybe t, the derivative, um, the dt is going to be negative. This is going to be negative dt. So that gives us negative ln cosine of x. And some people use absolute value, but I'll try to avoid it here. Let's just avoid absolute value. Or you can write this as ln of secant x, which looks a little nicer because cosine is 1 over secant or secant is 1 over cosine. With the case of this, when you integrate this, you're going to have a constant a. For the c, you're going to have to make up like you need a 1 over c. And then other than that, everything else is the same. This will be ln of secant of a cx plus b. 
okay and then there's no constant because we already had taken care of all the constants and kind of put it into a over c ln c can so on and so forth this is just the case where um, the constant is positive let's go ahead and talk about the case where c2 is less than zero because i also need to talk about it for completeness sake but i'm not going to finish the whole problem because that would probably take forever and i'm going to leave it up to you as an exercise but here's where we left off with the constant c2 if c2 is less than zero you're going to have something like maybe we can set c2 equal to negative b squared and of course these a b c values are all different they don't have to be the same and here we can kind of write it the reason why i do that is i want to keep the b positive and c2 is negative so that way we guarantee right and here we can go ahead and do the following we can kind of do the partial fractions and once you do that you're going to have two ln's which you can probably combine into a single one and you should be getting something very similar to what we had before make sense and that should turn into something like this at the end let's go ahead and take a look at the result from from <laughs> from wolfram alpha and then see if that kind of agrees with what we found tada wolfram alpha only provides one solution why what do you think it doesn't consider different options for the constant is it possible or not i'm going to leave that up to you again it's an open-ended question and this brings us to the end of this video thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed it please let me know don't forget to comment like and subscribe i'll see you next time with another video until then be safe take care and bye bye